Great. So good afternoon, Eli, Eli the Everyman. It's lovely to chat with you. How are you doing? Very well. Very well. Doing Thanks good. for inviting me, Karen. Yes, a pleasure. So yeah, where where you're you've been invited to Wise Women Weekdays. Um, so it's it's great to have you. And those that are watching this, please like, subscribe, and, and comment. And if you've got any questions for Eli, who runs the Shine Seminars, um, amongst many other things, you move furniture, you're a family man, you're a very busy person, aren't you? Basically. Yeah. Well, we've got to be productive. I always say, don't be a consumer, be a producer. Great, I like that. I like that. It sounds like a farmer, if there's any farmers <laughs> yeah, that's there. That's it. Um, that's it. Yeah, yeah. So, but today, I mean, we were just chatting yesterday, weren't we? Just having a, a chit chat on the on the phone. I said, come on the show and talk about what would you like to talk about. And the vogue thing for you at the moment is narcissism, isn't it? You want to talk about narcissism because I think the world is full of narcissists. That's right. It's a very hard word to say, very hard to spell. It's lots of C's and S's, isn't it? it so is. um, it is. What, what, what made you want to talk about narcissism or, or narcissists, Eli? So, um, well, it's basically the kind of the globalist consciousness is narcissistic. And we're, we're being um, programmed right across the board on an industrial scale to be self-centered. Um and I've seen it from my own personal experience, which I can talk about in a minute. Mm. Um, and that the story of me finding out what narcissism is and how it's so destructive and damaging um, is, I just think is really important for people to understand um, how to recognize it and what to do when you come across a narcissistic character or somebody with narcissistic tendencies i'm not an expert but i do have real world experience and mm -hmm. i've had to build up enough knowledge to be able to deal with the subject myself so it's very much an experiential talk i'm going to give you know i'm going to i'm going to try and give some examples of how you can see narcissism and how it manifests in people because um, I mean, obviously, we can go into the historical thing with the the Roman play or the Roman story, Ovid, with metamorphosis, and you know he falls in love with himself and all that sort of stuff. But it's some people say that there is, um, in fact, um, Lucy Wyatt does a talk um, on um, on the Doom cult, and she talks about the Gnostic side of narcissism, and some people. Um, I can't remember what it's called now, but in in the the um, the Mexican tradition and Toltec tradition, there is mm. also the mind parasite as well. <clears throat> so it's been well known that this particular type of consciousness has existed for thousands of years. Um, so, so can you explain though know, what, yeah. what actually what does it mean to be a narcissist? Can you can you sort of define it? Can you put it into yeah yeah. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> there's, there's there's different, I mean, I'm not an expert, but there are different types of narcissists. But basically, a narcissist is anybody who pen, who manipulates someone or a situation to serve them. They have no empathy, no compassion, and no feelings or any regard for the other person. So it's completely selfish and self-serving. And on a basic level, that's what narcissistic behavior is. And, um, and is there any benefit to anybody other than that individual of, you know, of being a narcissist to have them in your life as friends or family or work colleagues? Is there any benefit? Well, in my, in, from my experience, and I do have two narcissists in my family, um, mm -hmm. you can, you can live with a narcissist and not know they're a narcissist as long as you keep them happy, as long as they're running their own program and they get their own way all the time you would never know. So yeah. as long as you're doing what they want you to do, you will you would never know that they were a narcissist. Um, and, and you get what's known as a codependent. So the person who is in the narcissistic relationship becomes codependent with that person and they are running the same programs and helping the narcissist achieve their goals. And they might become, if you're in a relationship or you're married, they might be the same goals. So... Okay. So to answer your question is it's yes, you can, it can be beneficial to have an narcissist in your life if you're running the same program as them. Um, but you know, how many times does that happen? Maybe in a marriage, um, 
maybe with children you can have narcissistic children yeah you know so uh but i would say overall generally no <laughs> it's not good news yeah. at all uh so you know and no. so, so what would a trait be let's say you, you've been in a marriage for i don't know 20 years or so and then and then let's say the partner one of the partners doesn't want to do what the other the other one does i mean how, how would this play out if you are with a narcissist and you didn't want to do that what would be the first signs or is it not as simple as that uh well what happens is that the the narcissist will get to know the person and reflect back what they want so they will actually make them feel amazing you know there's this honeymoon period when you start going out with people and obviously mm. that can be a pure love thing and that can be a lovely thing but also mm narcissists reflect back whatever people want to get in their favor to get close to them um so you know down the line it's very difficult to actually disseminate where the line is between what you want and what the other person wants um i mean famously in the film gaslighting or it's it's called gaslight the film oh, funny by gaslight yeah yeah, well, it's actually called Gaslight, I think. There's, okay. there's different versions. There's actually, yeah. there's a 1940 version and a 1944 version. Right, and the okay. one that I've seen is the Ingrid Bergman one. Yeah, black and white. I thought it was called Fanny by Gaslight, but it might be Gaslighting. Yeah, no, it's actually called well, Gaslight. It's where the husband goes next door, yeah, yeah. and turns the, the gas down and she's that's going, it. she thinks she's going mad, but she's being gassed. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, that's it's it. So. Movie. Yeah. So that's a, that the that film is perfect for, to to describe what's happening because the the light gets turned down and she thinks that the light's still on but the light's getting turned down and so that's where the word gaslighting comes from. Yeah. So you can put them in a you, the, the narcissist will put the person in a, in a space where they actually start questioning their own sanity. And I think that that's probably quite a good indicator of whether you're living with a narcissist or you're dealing with a narcissist if you're starting to question your own sanity do i because in the film ingrid bergman's like you know um is this happening to me she kind yeah. of goes mad so you know that that's one of that's one of the things but very much if if a narcissist will isolate people they will mm -hmm. distract people from away from what they want to do they will um they will um, put people in situations that they don't necessarily want to be. They will play the victim and the perpetrator at the same time. Very much um, be a bit controversial here, but what Israel's doing, they are the victim, but they're the perpetrator at the same time. Yeah. So that's yeah. a real narcissistic consciousness. Um, so they will always play the victim. They will never admit that they are wrong, ever um it's not in their um not in their character at all they're very lonely they don't want to they they need people around them constantly to fill themselves up because they're very empty um so there's you know it's i feel that uh you know it's it's a subject that isn't talked about enough because it is so damaging and destructive and i can talk about that in a minute but you know ultimately they're putting on a performance and that performance is to elicit a response from you. So they will have a persona for you. They will have a persona for me. They will have a persona for their mum, for their grandma. And they will play out roles to those people to get what they want. And that, that could be anything. That could be a trigger. It could be money. It could be sex. It could be, you know, um, emotional ties. It could be anything as long as it's their motivation that they want, they want to get something out of it. So it's a very complex area. Um, mm. You know, um, I mean, the ultimate example that I've got of a narcissist, which is crazy is um, someone in my family who came into my family, married into my family about five years ago, just started treating everybody really badly and just started getting rid of everybody and making out to close family members that my wife and her sister were really bad people and that they shouldn't see those people anymore. Mm -hmm. And we don't see that person in the family anymore because the woman has, has basically told him that everybody hates her and yeah. And, and the whole family's fallen apart. Um, now that, that situation um, led me to talking to one of my friends who has passed on now, really clever guy called Tom Collins. 
And um, I spoke to Tom about it. And I said, oh, I've got this narcissistic character in my family. Um, and I didn't know much about narcissism at all. But they were so self. It was just everything was self. Everything. Um, and he said to me, well, I was married to a narcissist. He actually married two narcissists, believe it or not. It's funny isn't it? what you can attract. If you haven't learned it the first time, you, you know, you haven't learned those lessons. You're going to keep bringing these people into your life until you learn it. So yeah, you do need to. They're so destructive. And he was yeah. saying he was having a row with his first wife, um, and she was in the kitchen and she stabbed herself with a knife, and then she gave him the knife to try and get. Yeah. yeah. And so you've got to think in those terms with, you know, because it's a spectrum of narcissism. It's narcissistic tendencies histrionics is another one people who are histrionic who, who who you know um vampire your energy take your energy from you by being showman and and, and full of low vibe crisis drama pulling you into that all the time so anyway tom was telling me this story and and she called the police his ex-wife and the police came around and she tried to get them to believe that he'd stabbed her but she went to the depths of stabbing herself that's you crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. That, that for a normal, loving, normal human being, the narcissistic consciousness is so far away from that compassion, love, and empathy. Um, it's really damaging. So he told me that story. And I said to him, because there was quite a lot of money involved in this situation with our family, I said, What should I do? And he said, If you go down because all the wills were changed and everything it was all loads of legal stuff was changed and he and he said what's your motivation and i said well you know ultimately i want this person to be in our lives but also there is money involved and he said well look you can you can fight this person but they will drain all your energy and you'll yeah. be fighting them for years and you probably won't win that's what he said and I said, so what should I do? And he said, well, the money aside, you really need to run away, run as fast as you can, run as far as you can, and don't look back. Yeah. Now, that's an interesting thing to say, because I came back and I spoke to my wife and I was just like, this is what we've got to do. And she she went, you're right. That's exactly what we've got to do. So in effect, it's it's you have to see it on an energetic level as we do in our community a lot of the time. You know, we see it in, in terms of energy. They will suck you dry of your energy. And it's about you recognizing when they're doing that and to stop it. And the only way to stop it really is to give them no energy at all. Nothing. Zero. Not a conversation. I was told by someone else that narcissists are interesting because they will do what you tell them to do. Because their biggest, you know, not all the time, but their biggest fear is being uncovered. Is you actually exposing them for who they truly are. So it's, a, it's an interesting dynamic because if you write them a letter, they will write back to you. If you ask them questions, they will write back to you. But don't ever speak to them on the phone. Don't ever speak to them in person. Don't text them. Write them a letter. So it's almost like a legal thing. So you're what you're doing is you're contracting with them on a energetic level with writing to them. And they will respond to that. And you can keep communication going in that way. But if you have conversations on the phone, I'll give you a quick example. The person in my family, one of the people in my family who's a narcissist, she would pick up the phone when I was having a conversation with somebody else in the landline. And she would listen to that. And then if there was something she didn't like, she'd butt in. So, you know, and we we went to our house once and we were out in the garden with other members of the family and she opened the window on, on the bedroom and was listening and we could tell that she was doing that. You mm -hmm. know, they, they're all in, they, they're kind of in the background. They try and keep in the background. They don't want people to mm -hmm. know their true self. About their behaviour. Why, why, yeah. why do they do this? I mean, is it just just the way some some people are? What are they gaining? Is I spoke to um, Fergus Connor Greenwood about this, um, whose book 180 Degrees, a fantastic book, and he's written a chapter on uh, narcissism in that book. And um, 
there are many many theories some people say they've got no souls <laughs> you know okay wow. yeah it's like wow it's that deep <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it was really deep. Yeah, it's really deep. Some people believe that they are possessed so that they're in a low vibe and they actually get taken over by entities. Yeah. You know, there's that story. There there are some people who just think that they're wired in a different way. Um, but what's interesting about that, the whole phenomena of narcissism is there is a playbook. They have a playbook and it's the same things they do over and over and over again. And interestingly enough, it's the same things that the school system does to children it's the same things that corporates do to their employees it's the same things that the governments do to their people it's the same playbook they always say oh we're gonna have a great time we're gonna go it's like boris during lockdown yeah of course we're not gonna lock you down for christmas next day locked us down classic narcissistic behavior just you know get people into a really lovely space vulnerable feeling good about themselves and then yeah, yeah. 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 so um you know to answer your question it is a really deep question it's really deep and um i can't answer that question but you know it, it and i don't even know whether it's classed as a mental illness but yeah. certainly there are people who are undiagnosed and there are people who are diagnosed mm. um, the ones that are undiagnosed need to get diagnosed <laughs> Well, they're, not going to, are they? they're not going to want to go to the, the doctors and say, excuse me, am I a narcissist? And how can I, you know, how can I get out of it? Because they're not going to recognise it within themselves. Or are they? I mean, are they happy people? As far as I know from, because I do watch a lot of of YouTube about narcissism. Um, I'm very aware that you know, the situation we've got in one of our projects in, in Somerset, a narcissist got into that community and absolutely devastated it. And that that community has never recovered from that mm. situation. So, you know, I feel that it's something that people need to be able to recognize. And once mm. they recognize it, then they can do something about it. Um, there, there's a guy on YouTube. Uh, I think he's called the Nameless Narcissist. Okay. I think he's called the Nameless Narcissist, mm. and he's a, he's a he's an amazing guy because he's been clinically diagnosed. And what he does, he's got into his mind and he he tells you what a narcissist does. So a lot of the stuff, I, I watch him quite a lot because he's really entertaining because yeah. he's just like, really? Is that what they do? <laughs> you know, it's just like... And you can see what? it in your own life. Yeah, with the people yeah. that are in your relationships. That's yeah. That's it. <laughs> um, I, think, I think he's called the... Hold on, I might, I might have written it down somewhere, actually. I think he's called the Nameless Narcissist. Yeah um and uh he, he's just fantastic he he's he's absolutely fantastic so he will come on and he'll do five he does lots of youtube shorts and he'll come on and he'll say when you leave a narcissist this is how the narcissist feels and he and he and he opens he opens up as well because he says you know they're very lonely mm. you know, um there's 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 nothing inside them there's nothing there it's a void. Mm. Yeah, there's a void. Yeah, Which they and, can't fill. So, so that's why they. I guess they're vampires. They're sucking energy from other people. Would you say a narcissist yeah. is the same as a psychopath? Similar tendencies. Um, well, um, you've got to be very careful because it's kind of medical. But yeah. um, there are what's known as borderlines. There are tendencies. I mean, I've seen it in myself. Sometimes you do see certain elements. I'm not a narcissist, but you can see sometimes when you want really want somebody to do something, you will you you might well position them into a place where you know I'm a I I have got my own company. So, yeah. you know, when I need people to do things, I have to sometimes be gentle with them or move them into a position where they'll do what I want them to do, you know. Yeah. And you can be nice about that. But um, so there are borderlines, histrionics, um, uh, narcissists, there's I think three main types of narcissists. There's coverts who are openly narcissistic. Uh, sorry, they're 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 hidden narcissists. There are overts who are overtly narcissistic, and there's ma malignant uh, or maligned, which is actually really brutal. So, to answer your question, psychopathic um, behavior is the extreme of narcissism. That's yeah. that's that's the way I see it. Um, I haven't met any psychopaths yet, I don't think. 
but I have met very, very um, narcissistic people. Yeah. Do you, know, do you think there's any help for them? Like you say that, you know, the, the guy you're talking about on YouTube, if he's recognised, I mean, is is he a narcissist and the name is narcissist? He's claiming to be a narcissist, yeah? He's been diagnosed. He's been diagnosed. So is there yeah. help for them? You know, if he's being diagnosed, can you go and take some pills or can you go and meditate or go for a walk in the woods? Is there something you can do? Or do they not want to get rid of these characteristics that they, they carry? Um, I would suggest that that's up to them. Yeah. <laughs> but they can certainly have help. And he's in a lot better place. He's in a lot yeah. better place um, for, for being self-aware. I mean, there is one person I know whose wife actually said to me, uh, you know, my husband shows narcissistic tendencies and he's going to have a wall coming at some point. Right. And that's what happens. And in fact, in the, in the, in the poem, uh, metamorphosis, you know, where the narcissist story comes from. Um, I think he, he actually, um, when he realizes that the woman that he loves will never love him back, he shrivels and dies. And, and that's the tragic side of the narcissist because once they they never want to see themselves of who they truly are because they can't it, it you hold a mirror up to them and they will just die you know they they, they it, their illusion will just shatter yeah. so it, it it you got you know i don't think you're allowed to call people narcissists yeah you know, well no is it one of those words you're not allowed to say anymore yeah. So does that mean if I if I put this YouTube thing on my on my wise women, then it's going to come, it's going to be be removed. No, no there are loads of. Uh, the, I I did write a little list of people that I think your audience might be interested in. There's a great guy. He's an English guy called Robert Grannon. Robert Grannon, G R A W N O N. He's a fantastic guy to talk, and he really does know his stuff about narcissism. Um, there's a woman called uh, Dr. Romani. Um, who is absolutely fantastic as well. She's really, really Can good. Can you put these in the bottom, these yeah. in the description? Yeah, but keep going. So Dr. Amani. Yeah, um, I definitely, the nameless narcissist is a, he's a, he's just, because he's a narcissist, right? Yeah, it's just so it's great nice. to see that perception. That, that Quite idea. unusual. Really is, is unusual. It also, is it an extent of our shadow side? Because a, a lot of us, especially in, in what's going on in the world at the moment, there's, you know, with wars and cost of living and, and poverty it seems very extreme at the moment but do you think um there's the narcissists are living a shadow the, the majority of their life is in shadow because we all have a shadow don't we we all have a good and a bad we have like an angel on one shoulder and the little demon on the other and which one wins so do you think with the narcissist the demon like you say some some people might even be possessed by entities but do you think that's what it could be an extreme you know the the polarization. So I've got my dogs on my lap, so I keep fiddling around here. They keep nudging me. Um, but is is it a, an extreme part of our shadow side of self? Um, I you know what I don't know because as far as I can work out from that Jungian shadow work is mm -hmm. it's about integrating the shadow. And in fact, I went to see Paul McKenna two nights ago. Oh, okay, um, he's still around. Yeah, did you, did you, did you became become a piece of toast. I remember when I saw him years ago, he was making people pop out the toaster. Yeah. Were you a piece of toast? Um, I was quite scared because um, my wife got a seat in the front row. <laughs> I was like, "What? He's going to call me up?" <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but it's interesting because also in um, in Qigong and the Taoist tradition, um, it's about the middle way. So, um, an interesting. Yeah. Paul McKenna said this, you know, you've got the demon and you've got the angel. And actually, to okay. to get on in life, to get on in life, we have to integrate the two. So we bring them both together and then yes. it clicks, and then we and then the middle way, and we can work work through it. So um I, I personally I think narcissists are 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 just hollow and they and they and they don't have that capability of um of of not being selfish you know but it's 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 tough isn't it i mean how can yeah. i say that i'm not uh i'm not an expert in it but in my experience um it's very hard to deal with narcissistic behavior it is extremely difficult yeah. if you don't know their rules and how they play 
you can just i mean it, it gets so bad that my wife and i were arguing in our living room about the situation with this woman and i said what is going on they mm. are so powerful in the way that they put a parasite in your head they can yeah. manipulate people even when they're not around yeah so they can yeah. see things in your head and you will run a program and they've got you because they're yeah. harvesting, they know that you're arguing because they they they've set a battle off so they will do that from from the periphery of your life and they'll put seeds in it's it's a very you know it's just a very complex and deep subject that um manifests by abusing people you know i mean i I had a girl interestingly enough um in the freedom network i had a girl come on the screen one day in one of our meetings early on and she couldn't find the off button on the mute and she was like fiddling around fiddling around fiddling around and i couldn't hear her and it was just me and her she came on early and when she came on, I was in a, I was really traumatized because she really couldn't find the button. And she was like, she was really being traumatized herself. Wow. And, and she, and when I, a few weeks later, when I realized that she was a narcissist, I looked back at that and I was like, she did that deliberately to put me in a low frequency. So I was in a crisis mode. And right. then when so I came you- on, yeah, yeah, yeah. But so I, it's like bullshit. They're the, like they're the victims half the time. Then they're the victims, all the time. are they? All and the very, time. Very manipulative. Very, very clever. Then I should think. Very, very clever. Yeah. And yeah. when I went on, she actually said to me, "Oh, I'm suicidal." So again, dr- making me go into her life more, making me more subservient to her, making me feel, you know, empathy towards yeah. her, and and oh, what can I do for you? How can I help yeah. you? So instantly, and then in the conversation, he was like, oh, you've got a car I don't drive. Can you take me to the shops? Can you take me? You know, instantly, within an, half an hour, she just went for me. Um, and I spoke to somebody, and I actually I actually paid for her to have a therapy session, believe it or not, because she got uh, me. And did it, did it help? No, because the, the, the therapist, who's actually a quantum healer, I said, because I said to her, I said, well, how did you get on? And she just said, I looked in her eyes and there was no one there. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So there was no one there. Um, that person is still around. And she and she and she has been getting people to drive her around and lending her money and doing all those things yeah. that she wants. You know, it's it 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 is a it is like a mental condition. It, it sounds like it because I think most people are nice and we you know we are nice we are kind as as you know humans as, as a species and we want to help people and therefore those that are taking advantage of us um it's it's not such a great thing is it and i i think i see it a lot especially in the situation that we're all in at the moment you know you look at the powers that, that be that are are supposed to be taking care of us because what you're talking about isn't it on an individual you know um, perspective but on the, in the greater consciousness, the greater scheme of things, I think it's playing out, you know, across the across the globe, really, with with people that are, you know, we we put in power, or we think we've put in power. I think they put themselves in power, to be honest, and we've just gone along with it. But how, what's your views on that, with with what's going on in the world and, and our governments and our leaders and all that kind of stuff? Have we got a few narcissists there, or are they are they oblivious to you know what's happening? The they're all narcissists. <laughs> all of them. That's a yeah. quick answer. <laughs> I, I I would say, see, the problem is, is that they they make out that they're the pillar of the community. They are the best thing ever. They, they you know, they're wonderful. They'll do anything for you. You know, during that first period, that honeymoon period where they get to know you, you know, I mean, the, the woman that's in our family, in fact, the, the, the other guy who's in my family as well, they're both the same. They're really well liked in the local community. One of them's really like into the church and organizes the fate and she does the spring bloom flowers and everybody thinks she's wonderful. You know, it's, it's, it's mind blowing, but behind closed doors, she is like an absolute wit. I'm not going to say, you know, but she's, she's not no. a very nice person at all. No. Um, so, I mean, at the very top, you know, the plan is, is to put this, this AI in place that runs everything. And we're seeing mm. that now. And AI is completely narcissistic. 
It's completely mm -hmm. narcissistic because there is no compassion. Even if you think about when you go onto a website and it says, are you a robot? That is actually <laughs> narcissistic. It's a narcissistic because they're already playing the victim. Oh, I, I, I'm I'm the victim. The, the website, the machine is playing the victim. Yeah. Oh, well, I don't believe you. I don't believe who you are. You have to prove to me who you are. And then you prove who you are and they'll let you in. That's narcissistic in itself. So the AI has got no compassion, no empathy. It's got no humanity. It's got no heartfelt feelings. It, mm -hmm. Every single document you get from a company has got none of that written into it. The whole corporate structure is running narcissistic programs. Um, it teaches you to make money, make money, make money. It's hardwired. And you have to fit into that role. So the whole system, like I said, with education, with the corporates and with the AI is all designed to make you um, run those programs for it. So we've got an epidemic of narcissism. It's an epidemic. Yeah. And, you know, my son's 13 years old and even, you know, in his in his school environment, the children are narcissistic. It's, it's shocking. You know, just because he's a boy, the girls have a go at him just for being a boy. You know, well, that's the top. In, in, in what way? I mean, in what way? Because I know a lot of stuff's going on in schools now, which I wouldn't approve of. Thank goodness my kids are in their 20s now and uh, they're not at schools. But I would be freaking out from what I hear going on at schools. I mean, are you allowed to call a boy a boy these days? <laughs> well, my son doesn't go to school. He goes to a homeschooling group. Yeah. Um, which... Even there is compromises there, right? Um, because every, because all the kids are so um, detached from their children, from from their parents, and from their family because they're always on their screens. They're being brought up by the AI. Yeah, they're being brought yeah. up by computers, um, which is obviously part of the you know the twenty thirty thing. Um, you know, children will be brought up by the government. Yeah. So you know, it's it's very much it's a complex situation we're in. Um, you know, we have to do all the good stuff, which is, you know, be in nature, be with our friends, look after our health, drink nice water, eat organic food. We've got to do all that stuff. And that's all we can really do. Um, you know, I mean, I was on the phone today to somebody and they're having problems with British gas and British gas just won't stop their contract from a building that they've moved out of. It's narcissistic. They keep, they keep ringing her up and going, you're doing something wrong. And she's like, well, I've given you all the information you need. No, you haven't. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. That's literally it's, narcissistic. It's, it's, you're feeling guilty. I mean, I'm getting to a stage now, I'm dreading opening letters that come through, you know, from the council or whatever, because like you say, they're, they're, they're not pleasant to read. You feel no. like you're being guilty, you know. Yeah. It's very yeah. sad. And interesting, what you're saying about kids being brought up on AI or through the screens, which is what they are, Um I just straightway thought about years gone by, kids, well, it still happens, going to like boarding school. And I know a lot of people have gone to boarding school. And, you know, I know people in my family I have. I, I thought of me putting my kids at the age of whatever it is, eight, nine, 10, going to a school to sleep over and you don't see them for months is horrendous, I think, because it's breaking up the family unit. I know a lot of people do it. But again, I, I, I equate it to like this being brought up by on a screen it's not quite as bad but you hear what I'm saying you know when you have a child and they grow up a little bit and you shove them in a school and you don't see them for weeks at time because other people are bringing up your children whether it and then you know they're in a dormitory with other boys and they're having a laugh and that's all great but teachers are bringing up your children you don't know what's going on there you don't know what they're being taught and I think a lot of the powers that shouldn't be have gone through that system and, and to cer certain schools and colleges and, and whatever, they've all gone through a certain pathway, haven't they? To, um, you know, do, do what they're doing now. Yeah. They, and of course, they, there's the World Economic Forum with the young leaders and stuff like that. It's, it's uh, not they, good. They, they, well, it's interesting, isn't it? The whole, I mean, when I was young, I didn't even know what grooming was. No. But, so I thought it was just something with a horse or, a, or not, yeah. you know, stroking them. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. guess it is it's the same thing, isn't it? You're grooming them, you're stroking yeah. them nicely, yeah. getting yeah, yeah getting yeah. them. Yeah. But that's but that's common, that's common speak now. It, it you is. Know, my, my son knows about all this stuff. Yeah. He understands about, you know, people will 
be, be you know grooming children is is absolutely narcissistic it's mm -hmm. it's if it's a it's a sexual narcissism yes you know? so they will do anything they can to get that person in a situation where they can take advantage of them and they will do that over a period of years um, yeah. i've got one example of somebody who threatened somebody 30 years after they got divorced because they still couldn't let go of the fact yeah. that that person rejected them. Yeah. You know, um, you know, uh, I mean, it's, you know, there are, it, 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 it is difficult to see it. And um, I'm going to continue with my work and uh, I'm going to talk to some more people. Thomas Sheridan is a good person to, he's read, he's written two books on narcissism and psychopathic behavior. Um, and I'm going to carry on doing some work with it because I am able now to see the traits. There are some there are some traits. Um, people are very rosy in their language. Um, I can't I'm not going to name any names, mm. um, but there are certain people within the kind of the freedom community um, who don't live in this country. Uh, well, one of them does, but they, 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 they use this rosary language and they try to bamboozle people. Um, by using these long words and getting, I think, oh, that person's really amazing, and they get drawn in, and suddenly they the, that person's just doing what the narcissist wants them to do, and they're not being authentic. You know, I mean, the key thing is, you know, Karen, in all of this, is we've got to be authentic and aligned yeah. to what we feel and what we believe to be true and correct, if you will. And yeah. um, you know, so th there's lots of different tactics that they use um thomas sheridan did, has done loads of research on it and one in every 22 people is a narcissist that's quite high it is yeah it has it increased you know as as we've evolved as a species it's, it's increasing and is that through education or I, lack I of think, education i think that um there's a certain consciousness uh well I, here's a classic one communism is the yeah. classic narcissistic ideology so all the young people who are into communism think that it's all about community and sharing and collective well-being. Yeah. It's the exact yeah. opposite. <laughs> it's the yeah. exact opposite. So, you know, um, there's that scene in the in Hot Fuzz where they talk about the greater good, you know, it's for the greater good. <laughs> but it's not for the greater good, it's for them. It's not for the greater good. Yeah. So, you know, there's a whole bunch of things that we can see in society that are completely narcissistic you know boris johnson's the best he's the yeah. best because he he plays the fool he plays the top he take he plays the buffoon um i mean boris johnson has probably got a hugely high iq um he's incredibly clever he can re he can read you know i think he famously started reading the iliad like just you know i don't know whether you saw that on telly he no, just, I didn't. He, no. he just started coming out and just memory. He just memorized it and just started playing it out in his head and speaking it. Um, a classic narcissist, you know, just doing whatever is necessary to get in a position where he can do what he wants to do. Yeah, of power. Um, yeah, and then behind, so, the scenes, behind the scenes, he's he's having a having a party. That's it. Um, do you, <laughs> that's so, do you like, think people are born? Children are born with this characteristic. Or is taught is a learned condition. Um, well, that's a nature nurture thing, isn't it? Is mm -hmm. it is it yeah, natural it or is it nurtured? Um, I don't know. I really mm -hmm. don't know. I mean, some some people say that when you're born, you're the reptilian side of you, the kind of fight or flight side of you. Yeah. Um, you have to uh, control that and master that. And then you can bring forward the beautiful, lovely side of you. Yeah. And some people don't manage to do that when they're young. That's yeah. one theory. So I would say the roots are definitely there. You know, we do live in a free will world where there is the good and the bad. So I would say, yes, probably some people are born more narcissistic than others. Yeah. Um, I don't, you know, I, I don't have any proof of that. I've just thought no, it's, it's also to do with their upbringing, isn't it? That's that's the thing, you know, how they're taught, like you say, nurtured, how they're nurtured um, as, as a young child. It's the same as racism. You know, you're not taught. Um, sorry, you don't come out knowing somebody's a different colour. 
um, it, it's, it's taught, it's brought into your life about, oh, they're different, you know, so I'm just thinking it could be the same sort of yeah. They're, 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 yeah, they're, they're, they're very destructive, narcissists. Yeah, oh gosh, and, yes. And they will walk away and just laugh, you know, and they will move on to the next victim, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't know whether I mentioned to you the story yesterday on the phone about I met a guy in Glastonbury. I'll just tell you quickly because this is yeah, a great yeah, story. Yeah, for the camera, do you, for, for the show. Yeah, so... Um, I met this guy, I was doing a Qigong course, um, and I met his girlfriend. So I met them both. We got on really, really well. And then uh, I met her a couple of times later, and I met him once later. And then he rang me up one day, and he said, um, has my partner been talking to you about house removals and clearing houses? Because that's what I do. And I said, yes, yeah, she has. And he said... I'm in a bit of a situation. I said, what's that? And he said, she's moved in 12 waifs and strays from the town into the house that me and her and my mum bought. It was a bed and breakfast. And she'd moved these 12 people in and they were just living in the house. Mm -hmm. Absolute chaos. And so I said, well, he said to me, will you write an affidavit saying of your experience with this woman? And I said, well, I'd like to come and see you first. Because the golden rule with narcissism is no energy. Give them nothing. Zero. Because they can't do anything. They fall apart. If you give them nothing, they fall apart. So anyway, I went down and I saw him. And it was him and his mum, his mum's sister and his mum's best friend. And they were talking to me. And he was like really up for the fight. He thought that, you know, he was going to like win this battle that he was having with this woman. And um, I just said, look. She wants the house, okay? That's the deal. She wants the house. So what the only way that I think that you can get out of this situation is to sell the house. You sell the house, you take the energy out of the situation, she's gone, yeah? She gets her share. And he was like, no way, I'm not doing that, da da da, da. And he said, will you sign an affidavit to, 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 tell, to say that you've had this experience with her? And I went, no, I'm, I'm not going to do it. Um... And the reason I wasn't going to do it is if she found out, she would draw me into it. Yeah. If she knew that I was actively on his side, she would then start working on me. And I turned to him and I said, look, I'm not being funny. This isn't personal. She's doing this in Milan, London, Oslo, Madrid, Cologne. You're just one of many, you know. I said, you could, you know, you've got to play by her playbook and you've got to realise how she's going to deal with this. And she's just off. And she's left you with this absolute shit show. All these people yeah. in your house, with you and your mum arguing and all these people, that's perfect for her. She's harvesting that whole situation. And um, I left the situation and I said to him, I said, if you want me to talk to you about it, that's absolutely fine. The mum's best friend actually thought that I was right. She said, you should sell the house because that is actually the only solution without it being really, really messy and just harvesting his energy. The poor guy, yeah. but he was up for the fight. He just wouldn't let, it was like his left brain maleness was yeah. like, oh, I'm not letting her win. Yeah. Well, I, I said to him, I said, she's already won. I said, the first time you slept with her, she'd won. Mm. <laughs> You know, it's over. It, she's yeah. got you. Now, now you've got to really work hard to get out of this situation. And mm -hmm. I don't know what's happened in that, but that's what the narcissistic can do, can mm. completely ruin your life. And um, it's it's a, it's a great tragedy. And I really so hope... That that people, sorry, you really hope... I really hope that people begin to recognise it as being yeah. a thing. Lot, That's lots. what I was going to ask you. How can we recognise it, or can we not? Is it too late? You buy the house, you sleep with the person, and then you, then you're, you're stuffed. Is there is are there any, I mean, it sounds like it's, it's you know hidden under a cloak here because they are going to charm you and and win you over um, with their charisma, and then then you're you're stuffed. Or are there signs that you can see? Oh, hang on a minute, not going down that rope. Well, um, uh, Rob Graydon actually does loads of work on that um and actually the nameless narcissist does talk about it but rob graydon is the guy 
Um, he extracts people out of situations. He actually really works on them. From my own experience, I've been taken for a ride with these people every time. And I'm only learning now to actually see, you know, the, the actual consciousness. You you can't, you kind of get little glimpses of it. And when you see it, you can kind of work with that and actually test them. And Rob Graydon does that as well. He says you can test, you know, there is actually a psychometric test. Um, and in fact, um, Fergus in his book. I was just thinking that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, th th there's actually a psychometric test, but unfortunately, I, I, well, I was thinking that, like, <laughs> yeah. Well, unfortunately, narcissistic people yeah. have devised the test. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so, but um, it's You're interesting. Because, again. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, you know, I was talking to Fergus about this, and and Alan as well, Alan of Salisbury, and they both said that everybody who goes into public office has to take a psychometric test, everyone. And I think that that should actually stand. I think if I was going to be a local councillor, I would say I'm going to test everybody who has any sort of power because they're, 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 they're not for us. You know, the councils, the, the, the percentage of, of narcissists, narcissists in councils and government must be through the roof it must be yeah. through the roof there are obviously good people everywhere but because they because they want power and they want yeah. to manipulate politics is the perfect place for them to be it's yeah. perfect for them you see um i mean in in our community you know in the kind of the awake community so to speak um they also love our community because we're so open-hearted they come in and they're like oh this is brilliant everybody's going to love me and, and there's no discernment from the people. I mm. mean, I think if, if we're going to talk solutions based, I feel that people need to have a real discernment and just not give their energy out to people um, willy nilly. And that's hard for mm. people who are compassionate and empathic. You know, mm. um, my friend Anne, who she's a she works with um, flowers and herbs. She's a herbalist. She says, you know, the flower has enough protection to keep it protected but it's open enough to actually be open-hearted and so i feel that it's it's that balance it's the balance of being open-hearted enough to capture the light and being a beautiful person but also protecting yourself enough to not let these people in so there has to be a real spiritual discernment about you can get a feeling about people but actually they're so good at acting they're so good at manipulating yeah. They could, you know, like I say, they're nine times out of 10, they make out to be the best thing ever. So it's really difficult, Karen. It's not easy. Yeah, it's a tricky one. It really is, yeah. So, so is, it, is it the case that really we, we don't want narcissists in our lives at all? Or could we, you know, if we, because I, I can identify a few people in my life that I think they've, they've got those characteristics, um, but they're still in my life and I know where they are and they're like, you know, at a distance, I will protect myself energetically. I'll put myself in a, like, I don't know, a teffel around me or whatever, a golden bubble of light so they can't get too close and suck my energy um, because I'm quite happy with them in my life at a distance. Or would you advise people to just walk away? Just, just, just don't go there. I think if they're family, you, you've got problems. Yeah, if you're close, you know, if, yeah. Yeah, if you're really close, you've got problems. Um, I think if you can keep people away and at distance and you accept people on your terms, I mean, I I always feel that um if somebody is not serving you, and I know this might sound narcissistic in itself, but if somebody's not <laughs> if somebody's not serving you're not getting so, what you want. <laughs> yeah, well, no, but what I'm saying is it does sound a bit narcissistic, but if somebody's not serving you and actually drawing loads of energy from you and not giving you anything back, then, you know, that that's a red flag. But obviously narcissists do do that. They will do that for the honeymoon period. Yes. They will actually give you loads of stuff. Yes. I mean, the guy down at the, at the, the project down the road, he gaslit me to such an extent. I thought he was working really hard all the time on the farm and when I actually had a word with the landowner, 
he hadn't been there for nine months. And he put it in my head <laughs> that he was there like wow. every day. And then I found out, wow. which was, I was just like, what? This is nuts, you know? Yeah. And he did that with the whole community. Everybody thought he was there every day working and whoo, getting the community together, but he wasn't. He'd been there a day and a half in nine months. So, you know, it's a, it's an ongoing process. Yeah. We have to integrate these people because some people you can't get out of your life. You know, yeah. there's one person in my life that I've got to deal with. Um, I only see that person on my terms, you know, in 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 locations that suit me. And I do wear the kind of armor of God. So I go in and I'm, I stand strong in myself and I'm sovereign. And I'm like, this is my space. I raise my energy. I saw one of these people on Sunday. I had to spend two and a half, three hours with them. And I was just, I just took over the situation with my conversation and what, what I was doing and just being loving and jovial and funny and all that high frequency energy just negated anything they had yeah. and they yeah. couldn't get me. They yeah. couldn't get me because I was so high frequency and I kept that high ground constantly throughout the, the whole meeting. And and it took me two days to to get myself in a space to see that person. Wow, you know? recovery. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, I I one person actually used to make me physically ill. God, before, really? Before so, so I do you knew... think it's because because you're a high vibe kind of guy, um, because you're more sensitive to the, the negative frequencies that are out there, the people that are a little bit, you know, not below the heart, don't don't sort of think so compassionately. Do you think that could be it? So you're a little bit more sensitive, open? No doubt. No doubt. I think, I think, yeah, no doubt. I think the people who are affected the most are those people who are genuinely warm and loving people. And I think they're the people that are the most vulnerable. I mean, with, with the girl I was talking Mm. about in the zoom, she like clam, like got hold of this woman and they were, and I saw them together for about three or four months and it was difficult for me because I wanted to go up to the woman and say, you know, do you know that this woman's just literally using you? You know, because that's a common thing when you're a teenager or when you're young. Oh, is she using me? Is he using me? You know, that's a term, isn't it, that we've grown up with? Yeah. In relationships. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, but actually, I couldn't say anything because at that moment, they were buddies and she buddied up and she had yeah. to go through that process herself. And now yeah. she it's off because something's obviously happened you see and so they're not buddied up but i did i saw them regularly over a few months and i was just like shall i say anything i was like no i can't you because if you start accusing somebody they've won (laughs) yeah of course and they can turn around and go oh eli's so and so eli's this eli's that so yeah you've you've got to be a little bit careful about how you you know how you deal with it I, yeah. I think um, we're coming up to an hour now, so we, we need to wind up. I can't believe that hour's gone. We could talk about this for ages. But I think what is good is the fact that we are talking about it because obviously they've been down, been around since, since day one, since you know, since we've all been around. But now we may be, the fact that we're talking about it and the, what's going on in the world at the moment, we are, all, are very much aware, a lot of us that, you know, the powers that be shouldn't be in, in those situations. So we're querying it. Why, you know, what's happened? Where has where this sovereignty been taken and our freedom and liberty? So so I think that could be a good thing, that at least people are becoming more aware that not everybody's the same. We know that everybody's the same, but you, you know what I'm saying? You know, we're looking a little bit more deeper into why people's behaviour is the way it is. And therefore, it's a bit maybe a warning for us to, to give them more of a wide berth or to treat them differently. Yeah. I think one of the things that the narcissistic consciousness does is they mm. want to get a reaction from you. Mm. It's, it's all designed to get a reaction from you. Yeah. And, and, I, and I think that if anybody tries to put you in a particular space, you could be aware of that. Yeah. You know, people who deliberately trigger you or say, yeah. things that, you know, that is definitely a sign um, because they, because they, because it is a performance they put on to harvest yeah. energy yeah. so if if somebody says something to you and you and you kind of react in and actually you've got to just step back and not react yeah and be different. Yeah. yeah 
it's it 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 is tricky, but um, it's... but it comes from experience, doesn't it? Being in relationship, you know, whatever that relationship is, that's how you learn through through having that situation with another person. It, not that it, it might not be a nice situation, but that's how we've learned, and then you you can stand back a little bit and treat things differently, treat them differently. Yeah, I I definitely think it's on the radar, and it's interesting because um, I I stood up on stage at one of my events last year. And I talked about narcissism and I said, you don't have to be a globalist to be a narcissist, but it mm. is the same consciousness. Yeah. It, it, it's just, you know, they don't give a, they don't give a shit yeah. about us. It's just about their yeah. agenda. So yeah, yeah, yeah. The, whole, the whole environment that we're, we're living in at the moment is completely narcissistic. They're just, they're harvesting every single part of our energy. Yeah. And the only way we can really, you know, it, it's a bit like Neo in the matrix. Once you've sussed your own sovereignty, you can just bat it all off. Yes, once you know. Learning, getting your strengths together and yeah. being really strong in yourself, you know, which we've learned to do. <laughs> well, and I think that's why I really wanted to talk, and you said let's, let's talk about narcissism. I think that's why it's a really good conversation to have if people are watching this and find it's interesting and then they can identify certain um, people in their lives that might have the, the qualities or characteristics that we've described and, and, you know, how they may need to just take a step back and really, yeah, come into their own power. That's all it is. You can say no when you're being manipulated, manipulative, manipulated. You can just say no for so many things that, you know, when I've said that, a lot of thoughts, of, you know, a lot of uh, what we've gone through in recent times about saying no. Um, it's quite hard to say no, but it's also the easiest, shortest word. No, no. And and that's what I think people need to do, really. I think no, we should no. wind up now, unless there's anything you yeah. just want to say as, as, on an end basis. We put those names in the in the description that you've mentioned. Yeah, I, I was going to say, Karen, that is a perfect way to end because they will actually um, respond to you saying no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they do actually mm -hmm. respond to you saying no. Yeah. Good. If you start putting barriers up, they'll go somewhere else. Yes, they they sap the energy from somewhere else because it exactly. is an energy vampire. Ab absolutely. Yeah. So Brilliant. the no is important. But thank yeah. you. For, you can no, tell well, thank you for your time. Really, thank you so much for your time. So anybody watching this, if you have liked it, thumbs up, comment, yeah. maybe share. Um, any questions for Eli? And uh, Eli, I put your contact details if I may, in case anybody yeah. wants to get hold of you or come to the Shine Seminar. When's your next seminar? Well, we we I'm not really. Sorry, that went dead then. The line went dead. You're not um, really the, the new spot stuck. We're not doing any one day ones particularly, but we're gonna do we're doing the big one in August from the second to right. the fifth. So second to the fifth, Bristol, Glastonbury, is it? Glastonbury, it's, Bristol. No, it's um Forrester Dean. Forrester Dean, lovely. Forrester Dean, lovely. yeah. Yeah. So I might even come and join you. Yeah, come. Oh, all right. Yeah, why not? All right then, my lovely. Thank you so much. Right. And um, yeah, I will catch you very soon. Okay. Lovely. Cheers. Thanks, Karen. Cheers, Karen. Bye.